So what is prophecy and its purpose? This is the topic of our video today. And I want to talk about two main things. Uh, first of all, what prophecy is not. Second of all, what prophecy is. Each one of those things having really like three main subcategories. First of all, what prophecy is not is that prophecy is not equal with scripture. No b significant body of Pentecostal charismatic Christians that uh, believe in the present tense uh, practicing of prophetic ministry believes that their prophecies are equal with scripture. There may be some fringe groups out there that make that claim, uh, but once again, the more significant orthodox groups do not believe that. Now, some may ask, but wait a second, wasn't prophetic ministry given to write scripture? And the answer to that question is actually no. Uh, there is no scripture in the Bible that says that that is why prophetic ministry exists. And there are numerous prophets in the Bible, especially the Old Testament, hundreds if not thousands of prophets that did not write scripture. So first of all, in the Old Testament, there are 23 what we would call writing prophets. These are Old Testament prophets who were enabled by God, inspired by God to write scripture. Now there are people who wrote Old Testament scripture who were not prophets. And there are also many, many prophets in the Old Testament who did not write scripture. And that's what I wanna focus on uh, because it's interesting as you see some of these names, uh, there are pretty substantial names. Uh, for example, non-writing prophets would include none other than Abraham. <laughs> Abraham himself did not write scripture, but obviously anybody would see that Abraham was a prophet. You go down to his grandson, Jacob, a.k.a. Israel, basically, you know, it's his descendants that the entire Old Testament uh, is about. And once again, he did not write scripture, but he was obviously a prophet. He had many encounters with God uh, at Bethel. He had a vision of, you know, heaven with angels ascending and descending on a ladder. He gave prophecies to each of his children. Uh, including his son Judah, where he said, the scepter will never depart from Judah. Uh, the vast majority, if not like everybody, takes this as a messianic prophecy that Jesus Christ would come from the tribe of Judah. So clearly, Jacob, aka Israel, is a very important prophet. However, he did not write scripture. Virtually ever, everybody believes that Moses is the one that wrote the stories uh, of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Now, the Old Testament uh, throughout the scriptures also identifies many like just anonymous groups of prophets. There are in the book of Numbers chapter 11, there are 70 elders who prophesy. Um, there's an anonymous prophet in Judges 6, 8. There's a group of prophets that Saul, King Saul encountered in 1 Samuel 10. Uh, and also in chapter 19, Saul himself prophesied as well. Um, there are the sons of the prophets that followed Elijah and Elisha and so on and so forth. Uh, Jezebel murdered several different prophets and a man named Obadiah even hid a hundred other prophets in two different caves. So there are literally hundreds of different prophets uh, that we don't even have the names for. But in addition to Abraham and Israel, uh, I thought it was interesting as well that Elijah is also among the non-writing prophets. Now, a lot of people will look at the story of Elijah and say, surely the story of Elijah is in the Bible, so he wrote scripture. But tradition says that the prophet Jeremiah is actually the one who wrote the book of 2 Kings, which discusses uh, the stories of Elijah and Elisha. Elijah is a very uh, important prophet. It was in the spirit of Elijah that John the Baptist would come. And when Jesus was on the Mount of Transfiguration, it was Moses and Elijah that he encountered. It is very important to note that Elijah did not write scripture. So where Jeremiah got the information about Elijah from, we don't really know. But these are very significant prophetic figures in the Old Testament that did not write scripture. So it's kind of hard to really see where somebody would get the idea that God gave the ministry of the prophet for the writing of the Old Testament scriptures. People also go to the New Testament with the same concept, and they say that the ministry of a prophet was given for the writing of the Old Testament, and the ministry of the apostle was given for the writing of the New Testament. But this same concept can be applied. There are many apostles in the New Testament that did not write scripture. Uh, in fact, among the original 12 apostles, only three of them wrote scripture. So if you believe that apostolic ministry was given for the writing of scripture, then that means there's at least nine scriptural texts out there yet to be discovered. 
Um, but there are also people who wrote scripture that were not apostles. So it's kind of the same concept. People have this idea that prophets wrote the Old Testament, apostles wrote the New Testament. So there's no indication from the biblical text that the gift of prophecy or the ministry of a prophet was given for the writing of scripture. In fact, Ephesians chapter 4 says that apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers were given for things like equipping people for ministry, edifying the body of Christ, bringing people to perfection and maturity, and also unity of faith. And in 1 Corinthians 1.7, the Apostle Paul also links the spiritual gifts with the revelation of Jesus Christ, or basically the second coming of Christ. So the gift of prophecy was not given for the writing of Scripture, but actually for edifying and equipping the body of Christ until he comes. That's what the Bible actually tells us. Another thing that prophecy is not, and it is not only predicting the future. So Prophecy can involve predicting the future. This is obviously um, clear in both the Old and New Testament scriptures, and it has happened in modern history as well, where prophets were able to predict things. But it's not only predicting the future, nor is that even the primary purpose for the gift of prophecy. So prophecy is not like a horoscope where you basically gaze into the heavens and figure out what is going to happen. Um, a lot of people may even treat prophecies as such because they're looking for a new prophecy on a daily basis until they basically find one that they, they like or they think suits them. Prophecy is also not like a fortune cookie where it just delivers you good news and it's like, hey, look, something is, is good is going to happen, you know, praise the Lord. So prophecy is not uh, that as well. Now, what is prophecy? Prophecy can involve uh, what's called foretelling future events. So foretelling is when the gift of prophecy enables a prophet to see what is going to happen in the future. Um, now, once again, this is not the primary purpose of prophecy, but to differentiate these two aspects, you know, predicting the future is often called foretelling, but forthtelling is basically where prophets are able to see into the spiritual realm and basically shed light on present events. This is actually more common in both the scriptures and in the use of prophecy today. So there is a physical world, obviously, that we can... Um, experience and perceive with our five natural senses, but we also need to know that there's more going on in this world than meets the eye. In the early days of Israel, Israelite history, um, 1 Samuel 9, 9 actually tells us that prophets were formerly called seers because they had the ability to see into the spiritual realm. Uh, an example of this is in 2 Kings chapter 6, where Eli the prophet Elisha and his assistant are basically surrounded by this army. And Elisha seems to be keeping his calm and his assistant is just scared to death. So Elisha actually prays that, the, that God would open his assistant's eyes and lo and behold, what does he see? He sees that the Syrian army was actually surrounded by God's angelic army. He couldn't see that before, but that was actually the reality that they were experiencing. So this is an important aspect of the gift of prophecy is basically seeing into the spiritual realm. And this leads us into the third aspect of prophecy that we've been referring to in our church as the throne room perspective. And this is basically being able to see world events or you know even events in your own life or what's going on in the church from God's perspective. I actually, I wanted to mention it in this video, but I don't want to uh, dwell on this too much because we're actually going to go more in depth into that concept in a later video. So today we explored a few things about prophecy, what prophecy is not. Prophecy is not equal with scripture. The gift of prophecy was not given for the writing of scripture. And prophecy is not only about predicting the future. So what is prophecy? Prophecy can involve predicting the future, but it is primarily about seeing into the present tense spiritual reality. So it is seeing things from a spiritual perspective rather than interpreting nat current events with our carnal minds or the natural perspective. Once again, going back to that throne room perspective, it is mostly about seeing things from God's perspective.
So if this video ministered to you in any way, shape, or form, or sparked your curiosity, perhaps, we are going to have several more videos on prophecy and the ministry of a prophet on the Call from the Mountain YouTube channel. We'd encourage you to subscribe to our channel. You can hit the like button, uh, hit the notification button, and feel free to share these videos on other social media platforms as